Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS Supercarrier update, we'll be looking at the new deck crew feature that allows plane directors, yellow shirts, to direct players and AI aircraft from parking locations to catapults and from the landing area to parking locations. This is supported in both single player and multiplayer with the option to disable it if you wish. We're currently behind the six pack and waiting for the division ahead of us to launch. I've already got the AP running and I've completed my checks. While we're waiting, let's go over some important points. From the controls supercarrier tab, we have several new options that include the ability to enable this new deck crew feature or only have deck crew around the catapults as we had before. We also have the ability to toggle on purple icon helpers over the active plane director. We can also toggle on and off taxi uh, messages, as well as limit the maximum speed on the deck and have simplified signals. In the center of the screen in yellow, we have an awaiting salute gesture, salute when ready message. This indicates that we need to contact the deck crew to let them know we're ready to start the aircraft. We've changed how wheel chocks work on the supercarrier. They will now only be removed once taxi clearance has been given. It's very important to follow plane director orders as carefully as possible and only launch from the directed catapult. To start the new deck crew launch procedures, we need to alert them by selecting the salute command, the ground crew radio menu, or by pressing left control plus left shift, plus left alt, plus S, key combination. Now, if you decide to use these hotkeys, you may certainly wish to uh, bind these to a much simpler key command. Our plane captain in the brown jersey is giving us the engine start signal. Let's go ahead and oblige and start the right engine. With the first engine started, we now have an awaiting salute gesture. This simply means that the next time we press the salute command, it indicates to the deck crew that we're ready for them to direct us to a catapult. With that done, let's skip ahead over the entire startup procedure to when we can taxi to the catapult. When we're ready to taxi, we'll give the salute command again, and the plane captain will hand us off to the plane director ahead of us, marked with a purple icon over his head. Now, as mentioned earlier, these helper icons are optional. The active plane director, indicated by the purple icon, is now giving us the command to taxi forward. When taxiing, try to keep between five and seven kilometers per hour. For tight turning, make sure you have nose wheel steering on high gain, indicated by NWS high in the lower right portion of the HUD. Our plane director is now handed off control to the controller off to the right. Now he's asking us to turn to the right. Again, most helpful with nose wheel steering to high. Keep turning right. Turning right, always keep them in view. And now taxi forward. Okay, he has passed us off now to the director out by catapult one, who is also directing us forward. And again, keeping the taxi speed pretty low between five and seven kilometers per hour. Keeping him in view. Okay, coming to the right. Always keeping it in view, coming forward. Pass this off to the plane director over Catapult 1, who has also now told us to uh, unfold the wings. 
And now directing us to come even further to the right. Always trust the director, even if you think he's about to uh, taxi you off the side of the ship. Coming forward, back to the left. Forward, coming to the left, forward, to the left. And usually at this point, I'll just light up the, uh, the center uh, rake on the bird slice from the new IFF antenna with the center of the catapult. Okay, and stop. And as you might imagine, this is all just the same as we've had in DCS for a while. And this never gets old for me, so let's watch the launch, and then we'll pick up on the recovery. All right, so we're picking up here on the recovery on the downwind leg. And I haven't done a, a case one recovery video in quite a long time. So I thought it might be a little helpful, a little fun to do it. And a little helpful and reminder for those of you who might be struggling a little bit. And there's certainly those of you who are much better at this than I am these days, who have some outstanding videos. But again, this is just another data point of the technique that at least works best for me. So you may notice I have the auto throttles enabled, indicated by ATC up on the HUD. And this works best for me. This way I'm not having to essentially touch the throttle at all. And the throttles are automatically moved to maintain my angle attack, which is on speed. So about 600 feet, 140 knots or so. And again, of course, your speed is going to be depending generally on your weight. And looking for the round down on the end of the carrier to start my break. And I'm coming in now, 30 degree bank. And just going to keep the uh, flight path marker just below the HUD there. Now, one thing I do is I use the uh, ICLS to have those uh, needles, which are a pretty good crutch uh, to make sure on the correct uh, glide path. Now coming through 90 degrees and a little high, uh, about 500 where it should be 450. And you'll notice with the ICLS needles, I'm using the horizontal one to judge my glide path, keeping the flight path marker just about on it. Okay, I've got my ball up, nice and centered. And at this point, again, I'm not touching the throttle at all. I'm just basically pushing the stick forward and back to keep the meatball centers as best I can. A little bit low. A little off to the left. And down. Okay, let the wire bring us back. Raise the flaps. 
Raise the hook. Don't immediately drive out of the box. Look for your director. Follow the director. Asking us to come forward. And if you want to relaunch or rearm, you'll have to go to the directed parking location. You can't just drive immediately to the catapult. Keep coming forward. Coming to the right. There's a steering high, of course. Keep coming right. Passing this off. Stop. Hold up the wings. And coming to the right. And coming forward. Keep coming forward. Okay, pass the next director. Also coming forward. Coming to the right. Coming forward. And next pass off. Looks like we've got a bit of a hike ahead of us. we're doing this it's also important to remember that when we do landings like we just did that you really follow the ATC check-in instructions if you don't you're very likely to get a wave off okay passed off to the next director out by the wires Coming to the right so we can make that turn. Okay, hard left. Duck. And don't scratch the Hawkeye. Wombat would be quite upset. Let's watch the director, went over the um, wire, and hand it off to the guy in the junkyard. Keeps directing us left. And stop. And at this point, we're going to be automatically turned 180 degrees. Now, at this point, we have a window that automatically pops up that allows you to rearm, refuel, or relaunch, but for some reason in my video capture software, it's not showing it. Now, we can also enable or disable this window by pressing left control, left alt, left shift, and P all at the same time. But again, if you want, you can rebind that hotkey too. If you choose to relaunch, but the taxi path is blocked, you will be automatically teleported to an available parking spot with a clear path to a catapult. It's also important to remember, if you ever get stuck during the taxi process, you can always press left control, left alt, left shift, and T at the same time to teleport you to a parking spot. And that's it for this video on the new Supercarrier Deck Crew features. Now keep in mind we do have an updated Supercarrier manual that goes into these features in much greater detail. So if something is a little unclear, we want some more detail, please certainly take a look at the manual. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.